Hi guys, I'm going to share what I learned from reading Ataturk's biography. He is one of the most amazing and well-respected leaders of the 20th century and I'm going to introduce some of the amazing things that he did and how he transformed the nation and particularly the Battle of Gallipoli which was one of the most important battles of the 20th century and of the war. Not only did he reform the language and modernise the state and protect the state but he was also one of the most amazing military commanders of the 20th century and one of the best leaders of the 20th century. So check out what JFK had to say about Ataturk. The name of Ataturk brings to mind the historic accomplishments of one of the great men of this century. His inspired leadership of the Turkish people, his perceptive understanding of the modern world, and his boldness as a military leader. It is to the credit of Ataturk and the Turkish people that a free Turkey grew out of a collapsing empire and that the new Turkey has proudly proclaimed and maintained its independence ever since. Certainly there is no more successful example of national self-reliance than the birth of the Turkish Republic and the profound changes initiated since then by Turkey and Ataturk. So I'm going to introduce what happened in Gallipoli and this was one of the most important battles of the 20th century and the First World War because in this time the Ottoman Empire which was one of the premier and the, the largest empires in the world at the time was having a period of decline for a few hundred years and at this time of the First World War the Ottoman Empire came on the same side as Germany in the war and part of a secret alliance against Russia. In order to knock out Turkey from the war, the Allied powers, the British and the Anzac powers, launched an attack on Istanbul, which was called Constantinople. And they did that by attacking Gallipoli, which was aiming to take Constantinople, which was the capital city and the most important city of Turkey, which is such a strategic location for Europe and for the war. So here are five things that I learned from Ataturk that made him such an amazing leader that you can see from this Gallipoli campaign. So the first thing I learned is the importance of being in the front line and being together with the people. People say that the difference between a manager and a leader is a manager is from behind and they tell people what to do but a leader is out in front of with the troops and this is exactly what Ataturk did. He used to do the reconnaissance by himself by going out to the front and it, in that way he had a much better understanding of where the troops were and where the key positions were. There are so many advantages of being out in the front because you can have a better understanding of the lay of the situation of the battlefield. But it also means that you're much faster to be able to respond to threats and you can also understand the troops and the troops can see you out at the front of the battlefield. And he also used to lead at the front and he used to give speeches that inspired his people and his soldiers to, to fight. In one of his speeches he was at the front of the battlefield and he gave the order to attack. It started with the artillery. He set 16 battalions to attack and during the fighting Ataturk was hit by a shrapnel in the chest. And one of the soldiers noticed it and he reacted by shouting that he'd been shot. and. Ataturk covered his mouth, ordered him to be quiet so it wouldn't affect the other soldiers' morale. Luckily the shrapnel hit Ataturk's pocket watch which saved his life. But this is, this is an example of Ataturk's leadership and the importance. One of the really important things that Ataturk did in this battle, the second thing, is the understanding the terrain of the battlefield. Because he knew that it was extremely important to be on the high ground because he had fought in the same place in the Balklands War and so he understood the importance of the high ground. So he had this advantage compared to the Allied forces and he also accurately predicted where the Allied were most likely to land and he also knew that it would be better to concentrate the troops together rather than spread them out over such area which would weaken them and make them weaker and he knew it would be better to, be, to concentrate the forces where they're most likely to land. You can see that the on the other side, for the Anzac and the Allied forces, they didn't appreciate the importance of the high ground. 
and when they landed on the beaches and they landed in Gallipoli, they actually just started to dig trenches and they just started to do this trench warfare which was not the best way to win this. The most important way to win would have just been to attack and take the high ground as soon as possible because that was the most important part. So it's really interesting reading this from a British perspective because I learnt about the Gallipoli campaign through the huge loss of life that it brought about on the Anzac and the British troops. I never learnt about the role that Ataturk played and the, how amazing it was to defend such area by the Turks. It's really important to try and understand both sides because it's this amazing leadership that we can also learn from. At the same time it was uh, the reasons that the British did not they underestimated the power of the Turks at this time, the power of the leadership, the motivation they had to defend their home country and to defend this area which was the most important area and it would have led to the defeat of the nation of Turkey if it wasn't defended. So one of the really important lessons I learned from Ataturk was how it's really important to understand the troops and how they think because if you can understand how troops think then you can understand how to influence them and how to direct them. Instead of just giving orders and just saying you need to do this, you need to do that, try and understand what their motivations are and tie it into that. He used to give speeches at the front and he used to, for example, appeal to the officer's sense of shame, uh, discussing about the past defeats of the, of the Ottoman Empire and trying to show the shame of losing those defeats because that was something that would really motivate the troops. And then he would also tailor the message to all the soldiers according to what would motivate them. For example, he knew that the Muslim faith, using the Muslim faith and patriotism is something that would really motivate the soldiers. And also to appeal to their sense of honour. He would give some really powerful speeches and he would say that every soldier who fights here with me must realise he is honour bound not to retreat one step. If you want to rest, there will be no rest for our whole nation throughout eternity. You can feel how powerful that would be to the soldiers. There were many different battles for the Ottoman Empire at this time. In many of these battles they lost their troops and they didn't fight as well. What is huge to see the difference that having Ataturk as the leader made because it made the soldiers much more powerful and they were much more powerful when they were attacking. And one of the reasons why Ataturk was such a powerful leader is that he demanded complete commitment from the troops. He made the troops so that they were willing to do anything, they were willing to die for this, for this battle, for this cause, they would do anything. They're not just shoot, they're available and then run away, they would completely die for it. And he would give a speech which says, I do not expect you to attack, I am ordering you to die. In the time which passes until we die, other troops and commanders can come and take our place. And he also, there's a really interesting point where he see, sees the troops were retreating, they were out of ammo and he convinced them and to turn around and fix their bayonets and they fought with only with their bayonets. They would just sit there in this position and as a as the enemy did not know that they were out of ammo but they would just go there in the in that position and they were willing to fight with just their bayonets. One of the other speeches he said was I'm convinced that we must drive the enemy into the sea even if it means the death of, all, of us all. I'm sure there is not one among the troops we command who would rather die here than see a repeat of our Balkan disgrace. So this is a really important battle and it could have been lost by Turkey and it could have been lost by the Ottoman Empire and it would have had a completely huge effect on the nation and he managed to play an important part in, in winning that battle. Another important thing that he did was that he was very decisive and he took action. He knew, for example, the high ground was extremely important. He knew that it was important to attack at those times. Compare this to the Allied part of the invasion force, where they did not look for the high ground. And you can see the leader, who was Lieutenant, Lieutenant General Stopford, he was based in his ship and he ordered his men to stop and dig in the trenches instead of taking the high ground. So this is what I learned, that it was such an important role and that leadership was something that really inspired the troops and even without as many troops it still managed to defend and the leadership was part of that. And but every battle has two sides because uh, on one hand it was this great leadership and the great coordination of troops that managed to win the battle. At the same time it was lost by underestimating the power of the Ottomans, not having enough troops, 
being overconfident and not realizing the will and the uh, the power that they are willing to defend their most important city. So these are some five principles that I learned from reading Ataturk, Ataturk's biography and that you can see in the Gallipoli campaign. This is an example of Ataturk as an amazing military leader. So this was just the start where he reformed uh, Turkey and you can see that for example the language he reformed it from instead of using Arabic letters he used Roman letters which was easier to use and he made it more westernized and reformed the education system, the healthcare, equality and women's rights. Made a lot of these changes that were also huge achievements, really difficult. But you can see some of the principles that he used, such as understanding the people and the importance of that. So this is some of the amazing things about Ataturk and uh, what that I learned from the Gallipoli campaign. So if you like this, check out some of the other videos I have about some of the world's most inspiring leaders.